from Rexall. <laughs> from Hollywood, it's the Jimmy Durante Show. <laughs> Yes, 10,000 Rexall drug stores who carry the complete line of top quality Rexall drug products bring you the Jimmy Durante Show with Peggy Lee, Candy Candido, Roy Barge and his orchestra, yours truly, Howard Petrie, and our special guest again, the lovable Vic Moore. Folks will be glad to hear that Jimmy will be back on the show two weeks from tonight. But carrying on for Jimmy this evening is his good friend, the star of the old gold show, Frank Morgan. Well, Frank hasn't arrived at the studio as yet, but in the meantime, Roy Barge has dished up a tasty arrangement of that current hit song, I'll Dance With Your Father. Yes, good. I'll take her mother. We'll all go up to my place. Frank Morgan! <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure being on the Jimmy Durante Show. Now, where do we start, Mr. Putrey? <laughs> uh, Petrie. Petrie. Ah, uh, uh, pretty well, pretty well, pretty well. <laughs> well, it's nice to meet the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, oh, just exactly what is it I'm supposed to do here tonight? Uh, well, as you know, Mr. Morgan, Jimmy is in the hospital. Why, of course I know it. On Durante's floor, they have one of the most ravishing nurses I've ever seen. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and a form divine. <laughs> I've been over there every day this week. I think I'll go back tomorrow and see Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid you're too late, Mr. Morgan. Jimmy was discharged from the hospital today. Well, that's wonderful. Everybody at MGM will be delighted to have Jimmy back. Yes. He can play Lana Turner's part. <laughs> Especially <laughs> the men in the makeup department. Well, tell me, why the men in the makeup department? Well, the Durantes knows they get a lot of overtime. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> we're awfully glad you got here on time, Mr. Morgan. We heard, that, uh, we heard that you were up at Sun Valley and thought you might have been snowbound. Are you serious? Yeah. Morgan snowbound? Morgan, who surveyed the Alaskan Highway for the government? Well, it, it doesn't matter. Now that you're here... I knew you'd be interested. It was a frightful experience. Yeah, but we really haven't the time to now go to that... don't fight it, Pewter. You <laughs> going to... <laughs> Forty-three, and I was paddling up the Kamchatka River when suddenly I realized that I was lost in the uncharted wastelands of the Arctic with the temperature at 30 below and the wind whistling through my open kayak. Goodness, what did you do? What could I do? I buttoned it up. <laughs> I had used up all my provisions and starvation was staring me in the face. It was at this point that I had to shoot one of my sled dogs. For food? Exactly. The little rascal was holding out a can of Red Heart on me. <laughs> the icy fingers of the relentless Arctic night closed in. It was an imperative that I inquire warmer garments. Fortunately, I sighted an Eskimo. Say, is it true, Mr. Morgan, that the Eskimo is a sharp trader? Oh, yes. He often gets as much as a can of Sterno for one of his wives. <laughs> well, so you, you traded with him for one of his wives? No, be silly. I went to Alaska to get rid of one of mine. <laughs> I... <laughs> To get clothing. Yes. yes. Well, I approached the Eskimo cautiously, and after such gestures of friendship as rubbing noses and picking each other's pockets, <laughs> we proceeded to trade, and three days later, I discovered that instead of an Eskimo suit, I had purchased an Eskimo. Oh, how horrible for the both of you. Yes. What? <laughs> oh, you dog. You sneak one in. <laughs> Six months later, I discovered my companion was a female Eskimo. And what with one thing and another, we fell madly in love. <laughs> oh, you, you wanted to marry her? Oh, uh, yes. She warned me, however, that in a warmer climate, her fragile beauty might fade and a subtle change might come about in her appearance. But I was not prepared for the amazing change which did take place. Well, Mr. Morgan, you mean you brought your lovely Eskimo maiden here to Hollywood and she changed? Changed? That lovely maiden is now Sydney Greenstreet. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, Mr. Fuller. I'll see you around. <laughs> oh, just, just a minute. Here, come back here, Mr. Morgan. Come back here, please. You're, you're not through yet. Well, I must have been good. I'm held over. <laughs> <laughs> what is it now? Well, there's a man here who has something important to discuss with Mr. Durante. It's, yes? It's Jimmy's old friend, Mr. Ripple, uh, the United States Commissioner of Rivers and Waterways. Water? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see him anyway. <laughs> Glad to know you, sir. Well, how do you do? 
This guy could put out brush fires. He carries his own sprinkler system. <laughs> Jimmy isn't here tonight, but can may I? Maybe I can help you, Mr. Tipple. Uh, Mr. Ripple, Ripple, there's a <laughs> in it. What's your problem, son? Well, the Mississippi River is running in the wrong direction. <laughs> you should smoke old goals and get rid of that car. <laughs> no, it's not there. But my advice to you, sir, <laughs> if you want to change the course of the Mississippi, is to install a system of pipelines. Oh, pipelines don't work. We built one once to carry molasses from Texas to Chicago. <laughs> Molasses? Well, didn't the pipeline work? It broke in the middle, and now half of St. Louis is good. <laughs> I had an answer for that, but this guy washed out by next line. <laughs> How did the people of St. Louis feel after being covered with six feet of molasses? They only had one thing to say. What's that? <laughs> I'm glad he left. He was making me thirsty. <laughs> well, Howard, it was nice being here with you, but I really must be leaving. I have a very pressing engagement. Hi, Howard. I got, I got a... I had a... I was going to... I had a... <laughs> well, perhaps there's something around here that needs pressing. <laughs> so this is Frank Morgan. Yeah, Mr. Morgan, this is Peggy Lee. Oh, Peggy Lee, I'm a follower of yours. <laughs> You'll discover as you walk out here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Morgan, I knew you were a ladies' man, but I never imagined you were anything like this. Oh, please, please, I'm being sincere, Miss Lee. I've heard you sing many times, and in my opinion, your chromatic arpeggios are deliciously smooth, exquisitely mellow, and finely blended. Oh, what lovely words. Where did you get them? Off the label of a bottle. <laughs> I do a little voice coaching, you know, and I don't mind going on record as saying that you and I could make beautiful music together. Uh-uh-uh. Who is that? Petrillo. I'm afraid you'll have to sing alone for the present, my dear. <laughs> what shall it be? All dressed up with a broken heart. Oh, good. Well, I'll sit right here and watch. Yeah, I mean, I'll listen to you. <laughs> With a broken heart Pretending I'm with you Someone else in my arms Only brings back your charm It's a game I just can't carry through When I'm alone Then the teardrops start you can be sure that more than 2,000 different drug products are pure when they bear the name Rexall. For the familiar name Rexall stands for purity, quality, and reliability in a complete line of drug products. It's no wonder that Rexall has won first place in the medicine cabinets of millions of American homes. So for any and for all of your drug needs, always buy Rexall at Rexall drugstores throughout the nation. 
where 25% of America buys its drug products. If you want to be sure that the price is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall Identification. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Things are moving along splendidly. Now, the only thing I need around here to make my evening complete is a date with a beautiful girl. Well, I do, Mr. Morgan. I'm candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is amazing. It's the first blind date I've had who has a mustache longer than mine. <laughs> Tell me, young lady, how would you feel going out on a date with Frank Morgan? Well, if you get me in a corner and the lights are turned down low... My mother told me I should stay. I'm feeling mighty no. <laughs> Kid's voice sounds like the super chief whistling for a mate. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, coming up to the microphone is one of Jimmy's good friends as well as mine. It's that dashing Turhan Bay, who is more Bay than Turhan. <laughs> Victor, I see you're still quite the playboy. Well, thank you, Frank. I see you're quite the playboy. I oh, know, Victor, but you're really the playboy. No, Frank, you're the real playboy. This is silly playing with boys. Can't we get some girls? <laughs> well, it's fine with me, but I don't know if Durante would approve. Well, oh, say, by the way, what's wrong with Jimmy, anyway? Well, I heard a rumor that he was having his nose operated on. They told me the entire hospital gallery stood up and cheered when Durandy put his nose on the operating table. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder, since prices went up, that's the first time they've seen that much meat on the table. <laughs> well, Victor, as long as we ran into each other this way, why don't we plan to go out tonight? I've got a telephone book with phone numbers of 20 beautiful girls. Is that all you ever think about, wine, women, and song? Oh, uh, don't be ridiculous. Many is the time I've gone for days without thinking of song. <laughs> and my taste for spirits began at a very early age Even in high school, I was voted the boy most likely to use Sensen <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me, Frank, does your whole family drink? Of course, my good man, but in moderation My great uncle is now 105 years old And a nurse feeds him bourbon for breakfast, bourbon for lunch, and bourbon for dinner Chaser? Yes, but he's a little old to catch her, I think <laughs> Oh, <yeah. laughs> But you know, Victor, I'm glad you showed up tonight. I was just thinking about you recently. Have you ever been interested in athletics? Oh, yes. When I was younger, I was a real athlete. For years, I played football at Vassar. <laughs> but if you played football at Vassar, you were on an all-girl team. Yeah, I know. We didn't win many games. But, oh, those puddles. <laughs> <laughs> No signal. Well, Victor, I'm convinced you're just the man I'm looking for. What this country needs most is a suitable contender to fight Joe Lewis for the heavyweight championship of the world. Yeah, I think so, too. And you are the logical contender. What? Yes. Do you mind if I go back to my garden? I have to let out the hem on some early bloomers. <laughs> See my pudgy pugilist, a fighting career is just what you need, Victor. A chance to prove to yourself that you're still a man. Have you ever done any fighting before? Have I? Yes. Why, when I was young, my fighting style was so ferocious, they called me Victor the Butcher Boy. <laughs> Victor the Butcher Boy? Yeah. I gave my opponent a right to the heart, a left to the kidneys, an uppercut to the chops, a right across the short ribs. And then? He knocked me down on my pot roast. <laughs> Pass the mustard and let's get going. <laughs> I'm going to take you under my wing, Victor, and get you in shape. Do you think uh, you could make me another Jersey Joe Walcott? Of course. Why, with my brains and your body, we can... Say, we don't have much to work with, do we? <laughs> I Victor, it takes strenuous training. After all, Walcott has muscles. 
I got muscles. Walcott has stamina. I got stamina. And Walcott has six children. If you don't mind till we go to the next page. <laughs> Is this a private conversation or can anybody break in? Oh. Vector, do join us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we were just discussing Victor's bicep. <laughs> Would you care to feel the muscle in his arm? Oh, I'd love to. Victor, take your coat off. No, I can't. That's where I keep my muscles. <laughs> You might be interested to know, Miss Lee, that under my direction, this lad is going to fight Joe Lewis. Yeah, I'm murdering. Oh, you fascinate me, Victor. Tell me more about yourself. Well, I was born at a very early age in Worcester, Massachusetts. I weigh the only three and a half pounds. <laughs> I'm surprised the game wouldn't let them keep you. <laughs> Yeah, but I grew rapidly, and at the age of three months... Yes? What happened? Nothing. I was too young. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever remember being that age. Why don't you sing, Peggy? Anything for you, Frankie boy. Second story from the Rexall Laboratory. This is the story of the green tag in the Rexall Laboratory, which means the same as the green light on a street corner. The raw materials for Rexall products come from all over the world. When a shipment of herbs, for instance, arrives at the Rexall Laboratory, it is placed in a large sterilizing room, after which a green tag is attached to each bale. When the shipment goes to the warehouse, every bale is checked. If any bale arrives without a green tag, the warehouse gives it the red light and back it goes to the sterilizing room. This is only a small example of the great care Rexall takes with all its raw materials. But it's a part of your guarantee that you can always depend on any product that bears the name Rexall. So for any and for all of your household drug needs, always buy Rexall at Rexall drugstores everywhere. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall identification. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Well, Victor, how are you coming along with your training for your championship fight with Joe Lewis? Oh, I'm in great shape. You're looking at 200 pounds of solid flesh and bone. There ain't a bit of muscle on me. <laughs> yes, sir, you're solid flab. Well, I can just see the fight now. You streak from your corner a driving dynamo of energy. That's not me. Then you, <laughs> then you spar expertly with your fists flying like angry pistons. 
Now, that's not me. <laughs> that after the fight there on the canvas lies a broken, battered, bleeding hulk that was once a man. That's me. <laughs> Well, come on, it's off to the training headquarters of Kill 'em All. Let's go. Killa, you've been training for weeks now, and I'm really ashamed that you haven't lost any weight. Why, you're spread out like an Iowa picnic. Yeah, well, I'm trying. Nonsense. When you started, we spelled your name out on the back of your trunk. Now there's room for your name, address, telephone, and social security number. <laughs> Well, you better be careful or I'll take my advertising space elsewhere. <laughs> I've already leased it out for man of distinction ad. Well, I don't know why we have such trouble getting you in shape. I've spared no expense keeping this training camp absolutely sanitary. That's what you think. Look, flying in the window, it's the biggest, virus ex-germ I've ever seen. Well, I guess you're right. Look out, Victor. He's biting me. <laughs> Tell me, Virus X Germ, how did you feel after biting Frank Morgan? <laughs> he didn't realize I'm 90 proof. <laughs> now you go on over there and work out on the punching bag while I complete arrangements for the fight. Okie dokie. As the spirit gets dukes. What's this? A woman in our training camp. Miss, you have no business here. Who are you, anyway? My name is Hot Breath Houlihan. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind turning your head the other way? You're steaming the creases out of my pants. <laughs> well, uh, Frankie boy, I'm interested in your fighter, Killer Moore. I'd like to make a little deal to have him show his fight. Madam, are you insinuating that honest Frank Morgan would take a bribe? This only happened once before, when some nefarious scoundrel offered me money to reveal the signals of my high school football team. And I was nauseated by the very thought. What did you do with the money? I hid it in no shoe. I got my... <laughs> well, uh, why don't you let me talk to the killer? If he shows his fight, we can all be rich. Well, now, that's worth discussing. Oh, killer! Come over here. There he is. What do you think of him? You can have him. I don't want him. He's too fat for me. <laughs> Button your lip, babe. You're talking to Killer Moore. Yeah? Well, uh, come over here and sit on my lap. Bucket pants. <laughs> Killer, this is Hot Breath Houlihan, and she has about as honest a crooked proposition to make us as I've ever heard. <laughs> Well, you see, it's like this, Snuffy. If you lay down in your fight with Lewis, we can make a lot of money. Oh, no, I wouldn't lay down. But we could all retire. Save your breath. Kill him or never throws your fight. But if you would, I'd love you for it. And cover your waiting mouth with hard, burning kisses. <laughs> what do you say now? Throw in the towel. I'll be home early tonight, Mother. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, that's the spirit. So long, satchel slack. <laughs> yeah. We're wealthy, killer. Come on, we're off to fight the champ. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to witness 15 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the wild. In this corner, Joe Lewis. Corner to challenge you, kill him more. Ah, get that bum out of there! You see, Victor, the crowd's right in back of you. I uh, know, I think that last guy is gaining on me. <laughs> now, don't be worried. All you have to do is take one punch and quit. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's been a last minute substitution for Joe Lewis. Uh, here he is, one of the meanest, roughest, toughest manglers ever to step into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm candy. <laughs> Candy. Oh, this is a thing. Oh, yes, candy. You can always lick candy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get a million of them. I get a million. <laughs> well, get 
cat killer. There goes the bell for the first round. Uh, come on, put up your deuce, Candy. I'm going to cut you in ribbons. Take this. Follow, follow. You hit me 37 times with one rabbit punch. Now, that's silly. How can he hit you 37 times with one rabbit punch? You know how those... Rabbits multiply. <laughs> Ah, oh, what a fight. Candy moves in and gives more a left. Now a right and a left and a right. Killer, why don't you hit him back? I think he found out one of my weaknesses. What's that? I'm a coward. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, Candy's winding up with a terrific haymaker, and there it goes right to Morris' chin. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Frank. Victor, where are you? Candy knocked me clear out of the arena, and I landed in the same hospital with Jimmy Durante. <laughs> the only reason he's staying here is because of his nurse. Nonsense. No nurse is going to keep Jimmy in the hospital. Put her on. I'll talk to her. Young lady, what's your name? My name is Hot Breath Houlihan. Move over, Durante. I'm joining you. <laughs> Friends, here are those formal Rexall reminders for the week. Remember, 25% of America buys its drug needs in Rexall drugstores. Remember, Rexall is that large and respected family of more than 2,000 different drug products. Remember, you can always depend on any drug product bearing the name Rexall. Remember, Rexall drug products are available in Rexall drugstores everywhere. And as Jimmy Durante always says, I do my shopping at a Rexall store, buying Rexall drugs, and furthermore, Umbriago, he prefers them too. We buy Rexall, that's all. How about you? Well, Victor, I guess you and I have taken care of everything around here. Let's go home. Hey, now, wait a minute. Not so fast, you two Lotharios. You're not getting out of here until you join me in singing Jimmy's own song, Should It Be. Well, now, it's only fair to tell you, Beggy, I'm not very good at handling vocals. Uh, my specialty is vocalist. <laughs> but let's try it. How about it, Victor? Oh, I can't sing. I haven't got my bass tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a rough treatment anyway, boys. Here's the way it goes. Chitta be, chitta be, chitta be, chitta be, chitta be. Clever lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chitta be, chitta be, chitta be, chitta be, That's groovy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. You mean duran has been singing this every week? That's right. Now I know what put him in the hospital. <laughs> Someday the world will recognize this lovely thing. I know the day will come. When Frank and Bing will sing Chitty bee, chitty bee, chitty bee, chitty bee, chitty bee Yeah, yeah, yeah It's kind of catchy Yeah, yeah, yeah How do you like it? We love your snuggle Yeah, We love it Yeah, yeah Good night, Jimmy. Good night, folks. And if you're listening, Mrs. Calabash, Durante may not be here, but I'm always available. Thank you, Victor Moore, and thank you, Frank Morgan. Well, Jimmy is recuperating this week. Victor Moore is with us again, and taking over Jimmy's spot will be one of America's greatest entertainers, Al Jolson. Frank Morgan appears for the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of Cass Timberlane, starring Spencer Tracy. Well, friends, Rex all for tonight from Peggy Lee, Candy Candido, Roy Bargie, Dave Barry, who plays Mr. Ripple, and yours truly, Howard Petrie. The program is produced and directed by Phil Cohan. Good health to all from Rex Hall. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.